We finished the last chapter with our calendar pickers, as you can see here. And they're great for displaying calendars for the current date or for any date you want with the ability to change them on the fly. But they're not really great for actually doing reporting and things like that we want to do. So now we're going to take this knowledge from these calendar pickers, what we learned from that, which are very useful on their own, but we're going to apply them to a full-fledged relational calendar with things like events, month views, week views, day views, reporting, you can do a find, everything. It's going to be completely relational. And the first order of business will be a table of dates. The idea behind this is you need one record for every date. So that's going to be 365 days for 2018, 365 records or days for 2019 and so on. We don't have to create all of them at once, but we need to have that table because that's how a database works. It organizes records. That's the idea behind any database, including FileMaker. So if you want to be able to do all the reporting and the finding and everything you want, you have to have these records in there. So let's start by creating that table. It's not very difficult. We'll go into Manage Database. It's a very simple table. We already have one calendar. We're going to use that as an interface, even though it has a bunch of stuff in it, but we're really only going to have one record. So I'm going to use it as an interface table. So we're going to make one called Dates. Hit Create. And the first thing I always do is create my housekeeping fields. Now, if you're in FileMaker 17, you may have already gotten the housekeeping fields. And if you're not familiar with how to stop these from getting created, you can just delete them. Or you can look at the FileMaker 17 videos on the same website, which are completely free. You don't have to pay for them. It'll teach you about default fields. I've turned them off because I don't want them, and also because I want to teach you how to do the default or the, the default fields I think that uh, the way I like them. I want them to be a certain way. So we're going to make our housekeeping fields, or as FileMaker calls them, the default fields. So this will be stamp, create, which will be a timestamp, which when we create it, we'll go into options, tell it to put in the timestamp, date and time, and prevent modification. Stamp, modify. This will be very similar, except it will be modification. And these are great for going back and finding out what happened to a record. You may go, I wonder who last you know modified this, or when it was done, or when it was created. It can really help you identify an issue. And that's where we're also going to have account create. That'll be a text. Make sure you change this back to text. We'll go in here and choose account name. Not name, because that's the name from your computer or from preferences and identifies uh, you know, the computer and not the person who logs on. The person who logs on is typing in their credentials, their password that is. And they're logging on and they're getting their, you know, their account name in there. And so you can track them no matter what computer they're on. That's why we want this one right here. And then I'll duplicate this one just to make it a little bit easier. Hit change, options change it down here, and we're set to go. Those are your basic housekeeping fields, and I like these conventions. I name them this way so that they sort together when you're viewing by field name, which I often do. That's my most common view. There's also some fields I would normally put in every one, which is a primary key. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to leave it as a text field because I'm going to put some letters in there. Go into Options. Tell it to auto enter a serial number. And you may or na may not put some leading characters, or not, it's up to you. I'm going to put in DAT and then a bunch of zeros. And this allows me to identify the serial number out of context because then if I'm in another table, it's not going to have DAT here. And because now it's text, I want to have these leading zeros so it sorts properly so you don't get sorted 1 and then 10 and then 2. You want 1, 2, 10. If you don't put these leading zeros, it's going to sort as text, which is how it'll sort, but the leading zeros will actually make it prevent that from happening. And what will happen is as soon as you get to 20, it's going to go like this. It's going to take that second to last zero, or the, last, the second to last number, and change it in there. So you're always going to have the same number of digits there. We'll prohibit modification there as well. We'll come into our validation, make sure it's not empty and unique. Now I'm not really going to, and I actually made a mistake on the name here. Let's change that to KP for primary key. 
We're not really going to use the primary key in this solution, but I always put a primary key in there just to identify it. You never know when you need it and you want to go back and reload it and replace all the contents there. So better just to have it in there just in case. You never know. And so these are the fields that we need in there, but we're also going to need one field that's actually going to be typed into, which is going to be our date field. I'm just going to simply call it date. No reason to make it any more complex than that. And so we're not going to have it auto enter or anything. We're going to actually have a script put that value in there. So we're going to show you how to create that script to generate these days so you can generate all of 2018 and 19 and 20. And then when it comes, you know, a year before or six months before, you can put in the next year, however you want to do it. Um, I don't usually load up all of my uh, dates for every single year, but you could. Databases are really good with records. That's what they do. They organize them. They find them. So you don't have to worry about having too many records in here, but you know the size can you know get a little bit bigger, so you might want to you know limit the number of records you put in. So I that's why I only create them one year at a time. 